from a farmer's perspective, the Scottish Government have a definition of rewilding that's very, very technical. But as far as we are concerned um, here at uh, Kirkton Upper Tyre, rewilding is just taking any piece of land that was formerly farmland um, and then changing its primary output to be biodiversity. Not necessarily its only output, but its primary rationale is managing it more from a biodiversity or a wider environmental perspective. Rewilding covers a wide range of different habitats and different scales. So any farmer or crofter should be able to look at their own farm or croft and see some part of the farm where they can either put in um, water margins, um, fence off the water margins, um, uh, or put in um, small areas of uh, trees as, as part of a, a, a new shelter belt, or just integrate trees into the landscape, or even just put in a, an area of wetland. We have a, a number of uh, what they call weeder scrapes um, on the farm. Um, that we introduced over the last oh, 10 years. One of the key things is you can do rewilding at any scale. It doesn't have to be only big. Um, it can be small scale, uh, medium scale, etc. And the key thing is for them to look at their, their farm or croft and um, see what they think the potential might be, see what they're happy to actually do um, and think of the type of habitats that they might be interested in having on their farm. There's no one size fits all when it comes to rewilding. It's just basically um, what's best for that particular farm. Depending on what they're doing, a lot of rewilding can be achieved on an individual farm. Um, some things might be best from a wildlife perspective if you do, did it in collaboration with your neighbour. But it's, as I say, it's, it's, there's no one size fits all. A lot of farmers, crofters might be concerned um, that they are farms productive and how do I actually integrate um, something different into that. That is relatively easy to do. Uh, even if it's a productive farm or a productive field, you'll have a wetter corner that you might want to actually fence off, maybe plant some trees in it or uh, create a sort of a, a, a wetland in it. Most farms um, will have burn streams running through the bottom of it. And fencing those off, um, um, even at a small scale, uh, can have a big benefit from a wildlife and a biodiversity perspective. Um, trees, trees are important. Trees can be integrated onto farms, not just as um, large woodlands and, 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 and forests, but you can have individual individual trees dotted around, um, we've created a small agroforestry plot. Basically, you, if you're wanting to do um, more for um, biodiversity and nature um, on your farm, any farm should be able to actually achieve that. If you were a, we're here at an upland farm, but if you're a lowland farm, hedgerows, field margins, water margins, they all tick the boxes big style for actually being beneficial for biodiversity and part of what I call the, the, uh, the rewilding continuum. In speaking to sort of farmers and land managers, one of the fallacies about, re about rewilding is rewilding is all about just leaving things to develop naturally. In the vast majority of cases, it needs some level of management. Um, not necessarily management every year, um, but if it was establishing a new woodland, uh, either by natural regeneration or by planting, you still need to manage it at least for the first five years help with some weeding just to actually give those trees a chance to really get established. Um, if it was a water margin you've created, you might need to graze it once every five years just to give a wide diversity of the, the, the plants a chance. So the biggest fallacy is, yeah, I just leave it alone and everything will be fine. And so from a farmer or a crofter not used to environmental management, biodiversity management, that can be a challenge. But other than that, it's just um, the scale at which you, which, what, what you want to do it. Clearly funding, could be a challenge. We've utilised a variety of different funding sources to do what we, we, we've, we've done here. But for many of these rewilding actions, they can actually be beneficial to the farm in the long run and um, um, help um, become more resilient to sort of climate change. Um, and so in some cases, you might consider it just an investment um, in the farm. In all of those cases, or the vast majority of those cases, the other challenge is time. It doesn't just happen. In most cases, you don't just rewild a corner, um, a water margin, a new woodland overnight. It takes time for it to establish. So that's the other challenge as well. We have fenced off now all the water courses in the farm to allow the um, vegetation in the water margins to um, grow, to flower, to be full of insects, to be full of birds, to be full of bats. Um, we've integrated a lot of trees in different ways on the farm. There's some fields on the farm where we've got large trees in the fields itself, but because the fields are grazed there can be no succession, any seedlings are getting nibbled out. But we've actually planted seedlings uh, and protected those seedlings um, in some of those areas to allow them, them to come through. We're also um, interested here 
it can be very wet, we can get nearly three and a half metres of rain in a bad year. Um, and before 2016, we didn't have any standing water on the farm. We've created a number of um, wetland areas um, on the farm where we've got small um, ponds to benefit birds feeding on um, um, insects. But those ponds themselves have really benefited um, invertebrates like um, dragonflies and damselflies. And in the, in the lowland part of the farm, which is very important to us, we've managed to integrate all those things without impacting adversely at all on the, the productive farming. And when the trees that we've planted really get established in about another five, 10 years for, for most of them, they'll be, they'll be providing the shelter and shade we need, not only from wind and rain during the winter, but from the increasing drought type conditions we're seeing during the summer. The primary rationale for doing um, rewilding is to actually um, benefit wildlife, benefit biodiversity, um, or to get wider environmental benefits such as um, helping with um, um, flood mitigation, holding water back. Um, we are here um, at the research farm, um, we are using technology in a variety of ways to help us um, understand uh, the benefits of what, we, what we're doing. Uh, I'm an ecologist, I have ecologists um, in the team, so we do do standard um, ecological surveys, biodiversity surveys, but we're also using technology now and looking to see how best to use technology to, um, to get a better, a better handle on uh, how the management that we've changed is benefiting wildlife. So this little thing here, um, little innocuous green box, is called um, an audio moth. It basically, you can set it to different frequencies, some frequencies where normal um, bird um, um, sounds are, or, f or we can set it to different frequencies to record bats. We put this out in different habitats on the farm, it records every sound it hears within that frequency. We take it back to um, the computer, uh, put it through a database um, that's connected to um, um, the United States, and that database will listen to the sound and say that is likely to be bird X, Y or Z. Um, that saves um, my staff spe having to spend time out in the field. More importantly, it's a type of technology that with a bit of guidance, anybody could use. Um, we're also interested in small mammal activity in the uh, different habitats on the farm and getting an understanding of whether we'll manage to benefit them um, or not. So many people will recognise this just as a standard trail camera. Um, a colleague in Aberdeen um, has developed a technique where we've got a, 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 a macro lens um, on the camera. We put, it, we put a box in front of it just to shelter it from the wind um, and we actually bait the front of the box um, with um, seeds and um, um, mealworms uh, and that attracts small mammals in. This camera takes video footage of them and we can take the SD card um, back in the office uh, and um, establish the, the, which small mammals have actually come to the trap um, over a, a, I think these are out for a three day period. Um, and again, um, it gives us an idea of the differences between the different habitats on the farm, what's better for some um, biodiversity species and what's, what's less better for, for others.